What's that? I, I asked for a Cadillac. Oh, the inside is a Cadillac of gas electric hybrid cars. Back in 1999, seven months before Toyota released their first generation Prius, Honda introduced the Insight, a two-seater subcompact with a 10 kilowatt electric motor sandwiched between a three-cylinder gas engine and a manual gearbox. The low weight, weird looking Insight would have the highest fuel economy of any gas powered car, capable of up to 70 miles or more per gallon. But with only two seats and a small cargo area, sales of the Insight were just a tiny fraction of the four door Prius, resulting in the first gen Insight ending in 2006. Honda tried two more generations that were more like the Prius, but few cared, leading to its end in 2022. This is the story of the Honda Insight. This is my old car. Hey, Chili, is that your car? Yeah, it's an Insight. It's the uh, Cadillac of hybrids. It's a little tight for a big guy like you. Small price to pay for the environment. But what about speed? Oh, Mark, if you're important, people will wait. Just one shot. All right, one spot for me. Come on. So here is a car that I realize now I should have considered for my recent top 10 weird Japanese cars episode. Just like Toyota had a great reputation for reliable and fuel efficient small cars in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, so did Honda. But Honda didn't offer anything remarkably different from Toyota. That changed in November of 1999, when Honda unveiled what would not only be their most fuel efficient car, but the most fuel efficient car of any automaker, at least according to the EPA in the US. But to achieve this goal, this new subcompact would have to make some compromises that even Honda knew would hurt its chances of being profitable. The Insight wasn't the first two-seater they offered in the US. It was predated by the Honda CRX, which was sold between 1984 and 1991. The brand new Civic CRX. Followed by the Honda Del Sol from 1992 to 1998. Both the CRX and Del Sol were built on the same platform as the Honda Civic. Both the CRX and Del Sol were marketed not as economy cars, as the Civic was, but as relatively cheap and nimble sports cars. It's a rocket. Their four-cylinder engines, which displaced between 1.3 and 1.6 liters during the course of their runs, were definitely fuel efficient, with the 1.3 managing to achieve a highway rating of 52 miles per gallon. Yet clearly Honda thought they could do better. With its official launch in 1999 as a 2000 model, Honda managed to beat Toyota's new Prius to market by seven months. Built with aluminum body panels and an aluminum frame, the Insight weighed less than 1,900 pounds, or around 840 kilograms. That's less than half of what the new Honda Civic weighs today. Adding to weight savings was making the sole transmission offering, at least in its first model year, be a five-speed manual and having air conditioning optional. The engine, a one-liter three-cylinder, was made of aluminum and magnesium and by itself made just 67 horsepower. Between the engine and the transmission was a 10 kilowatt electric motor, which added an additional 13 horses. What we've got is a tiny, teeny one liter petrol engine that's assisted by an electric motor. Unlike most hybrids on the market today, this electric motor could only supplement the gas engine. It wasn't designed to allow the car to travel limited distances solely on electric power. It's all very clever. The electric motor didn't offer a plug-in option, but instead was recharged via the engine as well as via regenerative braking, which is standard in most any hybrid or fully electric car today. Although the style change of the 90s meant that most cars by the year 2000 were more bubble shaped as compared to the early 80s, the Insight took that look to the extreme. To improve airflow around the sides, wheel skirts were added in the rear. This is something that used to only exist on big full-size sedans, like the Cadillac DeVille or Fleetwood. But on those cars, it was all in the name of style, certainly not to improve aerodynamics. With the rear wheels partially concealed, as well as the body tapered towards the rear, the rear axle was a few inches shorter than the front axle. Like most hybrids that followed, the Insight came standard with small, skinny, low rolling resistance tires. While this helped it reach the huge fuel economy gains, stability on the road was compromised. Although weight distribution wasn't too bad, considering the battery pack in the rear, set between the rear wheels, helped offset the weight of the front wheel drive engine, transmission, and electric motor. Speaking of batteries, they were nickel metal hydride batteries, which are bulkier and heavier than lithium ion, which is typical today. The batteries considerably raised the floor of the rear cargo area, although there was an additional storage compartment in the rear behind the batteries. With first year sales of only 3,700 units in the US, the Insight wasn't exactly flying off dealer lots. It didn't help that just seven months after its US launch, Toyota released the Prius as a 2001 model. The Insight sales increased to 4,700 for 2001, which would end up being its highest sales year for this first generation. Compare that to the 2001 Prius selling over 15,000 units. Obviously, nature approves. The Prius gas mileage was very good, but nowhere near 70. 
yet the Prius had a back seat and four doors, making it far more practical. The Insight, on the other hand, only had two seats, which would give a new driver the illusion it would drive like a sporty car. But with 0 to 60 times of over 12 seconds, and the tiny donut wheels, it was about as far from sporty as one could get. Having the only transmission option being manual didn't help sales, so for 2001, a CVT was optional. This likely played a role in the increased sales for 2001, but only having two seats meant it could never directly compete with the Prius. In 2002, Honda offered a hybrid version of the Civic, which sold better than the Insight, but it still didn't sell as well as the Prius. You, uh, never plug it in. And keep in mind that we're talking about the first-gen Prius here, which was a four-door sedan, not the more popular hatchback version that would be released in 2003. That version of the Prius would become the standard bearer for hybrids, which in turn often made it hated by men, as it came off as probably the least masculine car on the market. And watch the children run into the road because they haven't heard me coming. With so few insights on the road in comparison, it didn't get nearly the same amount of attention. In fact, I suspect the vast majority of drivers didn't even know it existed. Those who owned an Insight joined what they considered an elite club, who often challenged each other to see if they could beat the 60 to 70 miles per gallon rating. I don't know how comfortable you are with some light drafting, but that'll definitely help. Oh, yes! Yes! Not that this made the Insight less reviled by car lovers. It just created a unique niche. But Honda could only support a niche product for so long, especially considering that by 2005, Toyota sold more Priuses in the U.S. in just the first quarter of that year than Honda had ever sold Insights since they were first launched in 1999. With sales down to just about 700 Insights sold in 2006, Honda finally pulled the plug, or so we thought. By 2009, the success of the Prius had made its hatchback design become synonymous with hybrid, so Honda's next move wasn't all that surprising. The second-gen Insight, released in 2009 for the 2010 model year, shared nothing with the first-gen except the name, and as a five-door hatchback, it looked a whole lot like a Prius. This wasn't a coincidence, but instead by design, as Honda figured the best way to sell a hybrid was to make it look like what most everyone recognized as a hybrid. I remember thinking at the time that this Insight wasn't even trying to be an original design, like the old Insight was. But in 2009, for the 2010 model year, Honda sold over 20,000 Insights. That's more than they ever sold for the entire first-gen six-year run. As someone who loves weird cars, it should be no surprise that I was disappointed that Honda even bothered to bring back the Insight without taking some more risk. They clearly figured that making their car look like a Prius would entice some buyers to try the Honda, and it cost less than the Prius, so that should have been an advantage. But considering that Toyota sold nearly 140,000 Priuses in the U.S. in 2009, the Insight wasn't any threat to Toyota. Need my dust, Honda. Even a hybrid version of the Toyota Camry sold better than the Insight. Despite Honda dropping their price even more, sales of the Insight dropped to less than 16,000 for 2011 and less than 6,000 for 2012. Considering that the Insight's fuel economy of 42 miles per gallon was less than the Prius at 50 miles per gallon, it's no wonder the Insight didn't have a chance. Honda finally pulled the plug for a second time in 2013, with less than 5,000 sold that year. And yes, I just realized that I have twice used the term pulling the plug, even though the Insight couldn't be plugged in. Just kidding. <laughs> Considering that neither the Insight nor the Prius was attractive to sports car buyers, Honda also released the CRZ Hybrid for 2010. This car was considered at the time more like a successor to the old CRX, especially when you consider they brought back the tall hatchback with a split rear window. From the rear, it looked a bit odd, but it's not like Honda was new to making weird looking cars. I pinch. However, considering that by the 2010s, the typical US car buyer wanted an SUV, little cars simply didn't sell as well. The CRZ's best sales year in the US was 2011, with just over 11,000 sold. With less than half sold the following year, and continued losses each year after that, it is amazing Honda kept it on the market as long as they did, with production ending in 2016 and taking until 2018 to sell off all the remaining inventory. With the CRZ history, Honda decided again to play it safe in terms of styling when releasing their third attempt at the Insight in 2018. Considering their previous two attempts sold so poorly compared to their rivals, you would think they'd come up with a new name, and yet they chose Insight for this third attempt. Considering that several other hybrids had entered the market by this time, there was more opportunity to be different here instead of just copying the Prius as they did before. So instead, they released a car that looked more like what they already sold, and sold well, the Accord and Civic. Despite it looking much like their other cars, they still put out an ad trying to imply that the Insight was different and better than all other cars. A hybrid never looked so good. And at least a few buyers agreed, as in 2019, the Insight topped 23,000 in sales, its best sales year although not the big numbers Honda was clearly hoping for. The third gen Insight dropped only 5,700 sold for 2021, leading to its third cancellation. Despite Honda's two attempts to resurrect the Insight brand name, 
I suspect most car buyers wouldn't even recognize the name as a former car model. But those who do know cars will remember the Insight only as its first gen version, as a weird and risky move by Honda, which is a rare find today, and one of the best weird Japanese cars. So much so that I still can't believe I missed it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. And this weird wheel cover thing that makes it look like the Cadillac Coupe de Ville had a hybrid powered child.